The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. And this one, can everybody hear me now? Good evening, everyone. We're going to call to order the meeting of the Village Council. Uh, it is Thursday, February 18th, 6.30 p.m. And I will ask everyone here to please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Diane, please let the record show that all members of council are physically present here at the meeting. Yes, Mayor Mayor. Before we begin, just a couple of uh, uh, informational points on how we're conducting the meetings under the COVID-19 environment. Um, you can attend and participate in the meeting in person, as some of you are here this evening, or you could attend and participate via computer, tablet, or a smartphone. Uh, the public may participate remotely by joining the GoToWebinar uh, from their computer uh, or whatever device they're using. <coughs> and our meeting administrator, who's also the service manager, <laughs> will be tr looking to see if anyone um, using the, the raise their hand feature, if they want to make a public comment as we go through the meeting and there's opportunity for public comment. Those who are physically at the meeting, um, we ask that you continue to follow the, the right protocols. I see you all have your masks on. What's really important though, if you get up to walk around, for example, if, you, if you're going to, to speak, there's a, uh, podium in the back that we, you should go to speak and while you're up and walking wear your mask and obviously when you get to the podium you can remove your mask so you can speak clearly okay so with that has anybody seen Senator Powell yes he's on there there he is I I'm live gonna, I thought you were gonna come here personally no I'm joking <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to be there right now if I could no, listen, we understand. We thank you. We're very uh, 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 thankful to have you available via remote. Uh, one, thing, one of the things it does, it demonstrates that it does work and people can participate. So with that, we're going to hit a, a legislative update from uh, Senator Bobby Powell. Sir, you have it. Well, I want to thank you all for giving me the opportunity. I want to thank you, Mayor Pinto, uh, Vice Mayor Jeff Romero, Councilwoman Radusky, uh, Councilman Richard Volantis, and Councilwoman Selena, I always I always get your name your last name wrong. Sam Sam Samayos. <laughs> it's good to see y'all. I'm glad to be with you all tonight. Uh, I want to give you a legislative update. I am here in Tallahassee still. I want to see if I can share my screen to uh, show you what I'm looking at as it relates to um, our, a quick PowerPoint, quick and dirty version of what you'll see are what we're working on here in Tallahassee right now. And if I'm not able to share the screen, what I'll, I'll do is and, and just run through my slides and talk you through it. So uh, either way, we'll do it that way. Let's see, can I share the screen yet? Send them over. I just send them okay, show my screen and share my screen. So I think I'm sharing the screen now. Can you all see it? Got it. Excellent. So this is the legislative update for the village of Royal Palm Beach. It was re good to be with you all recently for the Martin Luther King festivities. I really enjoyed being at home uh, and celebrating with you all and uh, capsize. So uh, I am State Senator Bobby Powell. I do represent Royal Palm Beach, the village of Royal Palm Beach. I, the state senator, we have uh, 120 state representatives in the state of Florida and we have uh, 40 state senators, so uh, about one third less representatives than, I mean, less senators than representatives. We all do in the Senate four year terms up to 10 years, depending on how you fall during redistricting. In order for a bill to pass, it has to pass in both the House and the Senate. Now, what's important is we carry the appropriations. We carry appropriations and we have a proposed. $96 billion budget this year being proposed by Governor DeSantis. Many people have said we're going to have to take cuts. Uh, last year, the budget was 90, $93 billion, $92 billion, and we've got a $4 billion increase even after COVID. So uh, I'm feeling kind of good, although we've heard 
word that there's going to be a lot of cuts in the budget. So we'll see what happens. 60 days of session. Remember, this year is a odd year. And during odd years, session starts in March. Two years back, we set session to start January for even years. So on Tuesday, March 1st, we will begin session, which is almost about uh, a little more than a week away. Palm Beach County, we have a legislative delegation, one of the best delegations in the state, which consists of nine state representatives and four state senators. You know, the state representative for uh, the village of Royal Palm is Representative Matt Wilhite, who I have an excellent working relationship with when I really, really enjoy working with Rep. Wilhite. So this is the map of the district. You can see it. These are the areas that we represent. Uh, but what's most important amongst all those areas is what we have bold and an increased font, which is the village of Royal Palm Beach. 2020, 2022, my committees. These committees, as I've come into my upper class period of being a sen senator, I sit on the appropriations committee, which is the last committee for all funds to go through. I also sit on the Rules Committee, which is the committee that hears or sees just about every bill that will make it to the floor. So this year, uh, during my tenure, every bill that makes it to the floor either goes through rules or appropriations. So this year, I will see every bill prior to it hitting the floor in either rules or appropriations. I also sit on Commerce and Tourism, Community Affairs, which deals with a lot of our local issues. You all know how important home rule is to me because I know how, how important it is to you all. Criminal justice and the Joint Committee on Public Council Oversight in which I am the alternating chair and we recently have appointed a new uh, council for uh, new public council. Now some of the bills that I've introduced this year thus far include reemployment assistance because what happened during the pandemic and for people filing for unemployment uh, was a, a terrible debacle um, in terms of people being able to get through the system. The governor has tried to work on it. Uh, legislators have come up with ideas and the Senate president and Speaker of the House have also addressed the issue. However, to this day, we still have over 50% of the people who have applied for a claim have not received the first dime through the system uh, uh, or unemployment compensation. So we, we really, I filed 592 to work on that. Direct file of an information. This bill, 638, would keep juvenile offenders from being housed in the same location as adults in a uh, jail or a prison facility. So that is moving forward. Then there is the Bright Future Scholarship Program that we are working on. Uh, minimum qualifications for law enforcement or correctional officers, and then mental health training for our law enforcement officers because we all experience trauma, mental health is something that's very important to me. I work with Representative Silvers a lot on this particular issue, and this is also important to Representative Will Height because it deals with our public safety officers. So making sure that we have uh, safeguards in place to guard their mental health is very important to us. This year, I filed a number of appropriations. In these sets of appropriations, uh, we've got Royal Palm Beach Commons Park All Access Playground, that we put in uh, for a budget request and a number of different budget requests we've gotten through previously. Uh, I'm sorry, this is what we got through in 2020. Um, here's the, the, the last year with the Royal Palm Beach Commons Park All Access Playground area. It got through the process, but the governor vetoed it. I believe we put that in again, and I believe we've also got a couple of other requests that have come in from Ron Book, who's the lobbyist for Royal Palm Beach. And I'll be working with our council and the city manager uh, to make sure we're fighting and getting all the information we need to keep these things in the budget. Even though it will be a tight budget year, we're still working hard to get items in that budget. Some of the major issues we'll see, and you'll pay attention to, and I'm giving you all this pre-session so you'll watch and know what's happening. And if you have questions, please do not hesitate to call us. But we're seeing anti-protest legislation so far police reform legislation then dropped by the Florida Legislative Black Caucus, which I am the chair. Unemployment, many members have dealt with that and are doing bills related to unemployment. Education, we're seeing a push to extend or increase uh, private school vouchers. Mental health is always a major issue, 
especially dealing with gun violence here in the in the, not only the state of Florida but the United States and COVID nineteen. A couple of issues we haven't talked about. The governor has a priority to deal with social media companies, uh, and also we're working on or there's being a push to deal with or to slow down vote by mail. So there's been a push by by some of my colleagues for Senate Bill 90, which will limit vote by mail. Vaccine update. Uh, Jupiter Medical Center is now offering vaccinations to residents from Palm Beach and Martin counties who are age 18 to 64, but have one or more of the comorbidities that are listed below. Also, there have been several uh, vaccination sites in Palm Beach County for people to do pop-ups. It's also my understanding now that Publix and Walgreens as well as Walmart will be doing vaccines. And if you have questions, you'd like to get on the Department of Health uh, vaccination list, there's a phone number that is listed. I thought it was listed on this page, but if not, I can get that for you. And also you can, if you have a comorbidity, uh, have your doctor reach out to Jupiter Medical Center to have uh, you placed in line to get the vaccine. That was a quick version of our legislative update. This is my staff, Diane Andre, Kirsty Miles Esquire, and Christopher Stubbs. They are uh, the team, Team Powell, District 30, who represent very well in the office and who do the work here in Tallahassee as well as back in the district. Our phone number is 561-650-6880. And now, if you have any questions, I ran through that rather quickly. I'm here to answer those questions. Well, we thank you very much, Senator Powell. Any members of council would like to ask a question? Go ahead, Richard. Senator Powell, I was just wondering what was in the uh, Bright Futures bill that or they're looking at or what changes are you're looking at because I noticed bright futures and the requirements, everything keeps to be going up every year or every few years for um, the highest level. And is it addressing those or what? what's it about? Well, for my bright futures bill, and I'll pull it up for you, what our, our plan is to make it accessible to a little bit more students. Uh, it's Senate Bill 824. And with it being Senate Bill 824, there's a number of things that we've outlined in it. Uh, and it's our goal, like I said, to make it a little bit more accessible to the students in our community. I don't know how that will go, but what it does exactly and what it says exactly is, and I'll read it to you. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, uh, it's an act related to Florida Bright Future Scholarship Program. It amends. Uh, the chapters of Florida statute dealing with bright futures, and it deletes prohibit. Pro I'm sorry, deletes provisions prohibiting a student from being eligible for an initial award from any of the scholarships under the Florida Bright Futures Scholarship Program if the student was found guilty or entered a plea of no low contender to a felony charge, unless the student had been granted clemency, providing an effective date. So, what we know is there's been a, an extreme limit in terms of bright futures, and even this year. Uh, there are some bills that are limiting bright futures, but our goal and hope is to open that up to a number of students. We've also co planning to co-sponsor some of the bills that Democrats are running that would open this up. But what this, the goal of this is, if a student has ever had any contact with law enforcement or something that would eliminate their opportunity to get the bright futures program while they're in college, uh, this would not stop them from being able to complete their studies and continue getting their uh, their scholarship if they had a plea of no low contender um, or in, if they were not charged and they were or they had been granted clemency so it doesn't scar them for life. Thank you so much. Senator More Powell, than welcome. Do you think there's a good chance of this bill passing in this session? Well, you know, <laughs> it depends. It depends really upon how much people want to. We, we talk all the time about how important education is right. and we've got several different ways that we stop students from becoming successful and sometimes the college student and i think the way this was brought to us is that there have been college students who have been here in Tallahassee who have either gotten into trouble and were not charged but because they had gotten into the trouble 
uh, and had to go through proceedings and hearings, they had lost their scholarships. And once you're proved either not guilty or it's charged off, they don't get the opportunity to get that back. They lose it in its scholarship program. And it's also been the same, same kind of issue with regard to, and this is not us, this is the federal government, when it comes to federal grants or financial aid. So the charge is, yeah, we want to talk about reforms and making sure we help students get through the process. And I will be proposing, I mean, I propose the bill, but I will be walking over to the committee chairs to ask that this be put up on the agenda so we can have the conversation. We're going to have a lot of conversation this session, and I don't see why this should be one of them. Now, will my colleagues agree to it? I don't know. But will we ask for it? Absolutely. Well, I think it's a worthy endeavor. Hopefully, you'll be successful this, this, this term. Any other questions Thank from you. members on council? Sure, just one question. Sure, go ahead. Senator Powell, it's so good to see you. Thank you for presenting um, your report this evening. Are you going to be doing your weekly updates via video this year? <laughs> Absolutely. I okay. um, continue to try to work on those updates. I did one two nights ago. There are certain mm -hmm. things that happen, and I try to go on spontaneously so that people will get an update of what we're doing in Tallahassee. This uh, Senate Bill 90 that deals with vote by mail is a very dangerous bill that's moving through the process. And I think that people have to pay attention to what we're doing. And because we're in a virtual society now, it's easier for me to come to you and tell you, hey, I'm in Tallahassee and this is what's happening. So we will be doing weekly video updates as well. But now I have the ability and the opportunity to go on a couple times a week, more than likely, <clears throat> late at night, but I will provide as much information as I can to the citizens of District 30. Thank you. Uh, Senator Powell, thank you again for being here. And um, thank you for your support of Home Rule. Looks like the battle is on again this year. Um, Absolutely. Some of those bills that are proposed are ones we've seen before and they were defeated, they come back, uh, and then they get even more creative. Uh, taking away our authorities to make decisions for our residents. And so anything we can do to help, uh, we're, we're there for you. Uh, if you need some specifics and that kind of thing, uh, that oftentimes helps. So uh, uh, please reach out to us. I will. And Vice Mayor Hamera, you know, I am an AICP certified urban planner, and I'm sure. very good at reading zoning and land development reg regulations and land development codes and for some reason, I sat on the Community Affairs Committee while I had a lot of my colleagues decide that regional planning councils were obsolete and we didn't need them. Being that I am certified and I'm the only person who is in the legislature, not just the Senate, but the House as well, uh, I fought against that as well as every person who came up to speak was a professional and told them there was nobody who agreed to get rid of planning councils, but you'd be amazed to see how many of my colleagues voted to get rid of regional planning councils. It's like, what kind of world are we living in? But thank you because we had this conversation before we got up here. I do want to make you all aware that there's also a bill that I heard earlier while I was watching what's going on in the House where they're dealing with, they're trying to take away home rule with regard to home businesses or business tax certificates for home occupation. So keep your eye on that. Watch what we're doing here in the legislature. Like I said, the 60 days <laughs> from March which this year, March 1st through the end of April, maybe the beginning of May, are the most dangerous days in the state of Florida because that's when we're creating new laws that impact everybody. And sometimes the legislature does overstep its boundaries, and that has happened more than a few times. Okay. Thank you, Thank you all. Hey, I didn't see my friend uh, Keith Davis, who is the city attorney. Keith, good to see you as well. <laughs> but thank you all for having me tonight. I want to appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to seeing you all in person real soon again. Again. Have a good session, sir. And thank thanks, you. thanks again for coming coming here to see me. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor Pinto. Okay. Thank you for everything. I'll see you all soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Tonight, our next item on the agenda is a proclamation. Uh, so I'd like to read this to everyone. Uh, it's something that we, we think we've done it before, but 
um, the settler agreement of this year. Whereas the state of Florida officially recognizes March as Bicycle Month, and whereas residents and visitors of the village of Royal Palm Beach enjoy safe, environmentally friendly alternative methods of transportation that provide access to public and private facilities, such as parks, schools, Palm Tram bus stops, and businesses. And whereas the village of Royal Palm Beach encourages the safe use of bicycles as non-motorized transportation, and whereas the village of Royal Palm Beach is committed to improving the accessibility, connectivity, and safety of non-motorized transportation throughout the village by constructing and maintaining 60.2 miles of paved shared use pathways. And whereas the local recognition of Bicycle Month in the village of Royal Palm Beach will increase awareness of the alternative transportation options throughout the village while promoting the health benefits of bicycling along with reducing traffic congestion and ultimately uh, popularize, popularize bicycling as a variable, attractive alternative mode of transportation. So, oops, so now therefore, on behalf of the village of Royal Palm Beach, we proclaim uh, March 20, March 2021 as Royal Palm Beach Bicycle Month uh, and encourage all residents and visitors to safely explore the convenience and benefits of bicycling as an alternative to the motorized transportation throughout the village. Signed and sealed this 18th day of February 2021. So now everybody, when you leave the meeting tonight, go out and polish up that bicycle. Take, take it out of the, out of the dust uh, bin inside the garage. I'm going to I'm going to do that quick. All right, thank you. And uh, as I said, Diane, please make sure the TPA staff yes, gets copy of this so they can wear our All right, we're going to start out with reports this evening. Um, I'll, I'll open with a report uh, today. Uh, it is February 18th, the third Thursday of the month. So this morning we had our transportation planning agency uh, meeting. Uh, nothing. Uh, the, the most significant. Uh, event today, uh, an action was taken was we, the, the board approved um, the third amendment to our transportation improvement program for the fiscal year 21, uh, 2021 to 2025. Uh, the, the reason for this, there are a couple of changes they had to make, but they, the real reason was they wanted to add a couple of projects. And one of the projects is pretty significant. Uh, it has to do with the establishment of the, um, what's the name of that train? Safeway? No. Bright line. They keep changing the name on me. The Bright Line uh, train will be uh, building a station in Boca Raton. This is something they've been working on. It's something that the village of Boca Raton has been working on and, and, and pursued. But what was what was good to hear about it was the funding for this, which is about forty six million dollars, is is coming. Some of it's coming from the from the city. I think they're putting in about ten, but the rest of it is coming from the state and federal government. Uh, so that's really good to see that kind of infusion and to help that city uh, move forward with something that they th that I think is a good thing for them and important to, to get that station uh, going through Boca Raton. So that was the most significant activity this morning. And with that, I'm going to ask Elena to come. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see everybody here. Um, first of all, there is a forum on policing in Palm Beach County. So that is Wednesday, the 24th of February at 6 p.m. And you can either do it in person and virtual, but you do need to register. So if you go to pbcgov.com forward slash criminal justice, you can do that. COVID testing, as Senator Powell said, is uh, throughout the county, but it's open over at the South Florida Fair. So you do need to register over at the healthcare district, and that's hcdpbc.org. And then you can go through there. It's beautiful how they have it set up. It's really organized. So definitely look at that. We had the um, RAB meeting this month, and there are several classes that are still doing over at the rec center, yoga, dance, fitness rooms open, pickleball. And the pre-K classes have started up again. There are the free movies and concerts over at the park on Friday nights, so check that out on our website, royalpalmbeach.com. They're getting between 200 and 250 resident people there, I should say, um, every Friday. So it's really nice to see how that's grown again. Um, in February, the starting up with baseball, youth soccer, and eight-on-eight -eight football, but there will be no flag football this year. And then some of the projects that we talked about doing were paving the two grass lots at, Camp at Commons Park, the pathway lighting that we're adding, 
the um, and the large pavilion that we approved, they're going to do it on the west side of the stage. So that's going to be over there. And that's going to be really good for um, larger events to have out there right next to the stage. They are going through and starting to do um, fencing around playscapes in the various parks. So uh, Todd Robner and Preservation Park are the first two that they're going to do. And this way, it's more secure for staff, for um, families when they go through there, that the kids will then just be in that, that area. Um, and then... They are changing out the skate park from dasher boards to the chain link fence, and that's just something as times have changed that that's required, that they're, um, the people who use it are asking for that. And then uh, the soccer fields need to be closed two months every four months just for sodding purposes. So it's amazing how much use that they're getting and how many tournaments that they're getting over there, um, that it's really uh, getting a lot of use. And lastly, I'd like to thank the Park and Rec staff. There was Barky Pines did their 5K over there, and it's a tremendous course to do the 5K through Commons Park. It's certified, so all the markers are on there. Uh, and my favorite part was Bradford's toddlers were trash talking me the entire way. So I need to get back out there and start running. <laughs> that completes my report. They were keeping up with you? <laughs> Bradford's girls are smart, that's why. Um, my only report is uh, we actually had some good news out of the high school. Um, the final numbers are in for, I guess, the class of 2020 after all the adjustments, and the graduation rate was 93.8, which is another record high um, for the high school. And another potential good news is they are still on target for having their graduation on June the 8th. Uh, at the Expo Center in the fairgrounds. It's not going to be like it's always been, but hopefully they've got a plan where at least the kids can physically, yeah, the crowd, I don't know how they're going to do, but we'll see, and they're still working on it. And uh, But unfortunately for the seniors, there's no no uh, grad bash and there's no prom, so they're missing out on that. But no, hopefully they'll... No official prom. Well, no official prom, no official you know grad bash. Folks. And... Happy to report that uh, a major portion of the uh, Southern Boulevard project looks like it's about done is now they've got the three turn lanes if you're heading west at Crestwood, heading south into Wellington at Forest Hill. And uh, I haven't seen how big of a difference it's made because I haven't been there um, during rush hours, but it looks to me like it's going to be a huge difference. So uh, People use, use it uh, and, and use it well because it's been kind of scary with the construction and difficult the past several months. So I'd like to thank DOT for, for almost finishing it. It's, it's about there. So that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Oh, good evening. Evening, everybody. Nice to have folks sitting there looking at us. Um, it's been lonely <laughs> here. Um, speaking of roads, one of our favorite road discussions is State Road 7 Extension. Um, it's obviously one of West Palm Beach's favorite topics because they've spent something like $20 million on, on uh, uh, legal pursuits of uh, trying to prevent that from happening. Uh, the Florida DOT had a workshop, a public workshop. Actually, they ran two of them on the 28th of January, and um, they brought us up to speed. And the bottom line is that it's currently scheduled to begin con construction uh, early next year, so January 2022, and then it's about a three-year project. Uh, scheduled to actually be completed by uh, January of 2025. So um, it, it sounds really good. And one of the things that makes this even more feasible right now is they have addressed the, the uh, concerns that have been expressed about uh, environmental impacts and things of that nature by doing things like actually reducing the size of the roadway footprint and then moving it west away from Grassy Waters Preserve of course, when you do that, now you've moved it closer to Ibis and the homes. But for that, they've got something that we have here in Royal Palm Beach planned, and that is a sound wall. So on State Road 7 by um, Counterpoint, you'll see a sound wall that is a beige-colored uh, uh, rock-looking wall, and, and that's what's planned for, uh, for the Ibis community. So they have done a really, really good job of addressing all of the concerns. Um, West Palm is, is tenacious, to say the least. But hopefully we're, we're at a point now where we're going to see this thing begin to roll out. Uh, I had an unusual opportunity to be a judge, and, and, and so was uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Samios on uh, the regional competition here in Palm Beach County for the National High School Ethics Bowl. 
Uh, and while it wasn't a debate uh, format, it, it was somewhat similar to that. Uh, but any time you get a chance to hear um, some of these um, uh, young members of, um, of our schools uh, actually engage with one another on challenging topics, it's, it's reassuring about the future. It really, really is. They had some interesting topics. They had a, a total of 10 topics, and, and the two teams uh, were given a topic that they had seen before, but they didn't know which one they were going to actually have to address. Uh, they had topics, and the one that, that I actually uh, got a chance to, to witness in particular was uh, the, the question of if and when schools should open for face-to-face -face instruction. And, of course, there are good arguments on both sides. It makes it an ethical dilemma. And they did a great job of presenting, actually, the two teams were Oxbridge Academy and, um, and um, Suncoast. Uh, so it was very interesting, very challenging. And actually, Oxbridge Academy wound up winning the regional competition. Really? Yep. Yeah. So um, it, was a, it was a great opportunity. It really was. Speaking of education, uh, we have the, the village scholarships uh, applications are in. We have a total of 17 applicants, which is lower than we normally get, but I understand a lot of scholarship programs are going through the same kind of an experience. A thousand dollar scholarship, there's 10 of them. Uh, and uh, and we're, uh, we're looking forward for, to the board, Education Advisory Board, doing the interviews on April the 3rd, which is a Saturday. And uh, that's, always, again, it's another opportunity to listen to some of our youth talk about uh, not only their experiences in school, but also their view of the future. Uh, and, and very reassuring. So I'm looking forward to that, as I do every year. This last Education Advisory Board meeting that we had, uh, the second week of Monday, which we, we usually do, we always spotlight a school. This, this time it was Cypress um, Trails Elementary. And um, the principal, Bruce Salter, uh, talked about some of the innovative stuff they're doing. They're still dealing with a certain amount of the hybrid kind of training, uh, uh, teaching. And um, they, he gave one example that I thought was must have been an interesting opportunity for parents to engage. Uh, it's called the Virtual STEM Night. And what that meant was that parents got to work with their students on science projects in particular. And, um, and so it, 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 it got everybody involved firsthand in, in, the, uh, in the pursuit of understanding of science and actually applying some of the stuff that they're learning in school. So uh, that seemed to go really well. They're, they're at about 60 plus percent of their student body in class right now, uh, which is more than the, 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 the county. The county is about 52 percent. So um, kids are coming back. They really need to come back. In fact, that was one of the topics we brought up with the school district. Um, we, we don't normally um, seek provocative topics, but these times just kind of open up the opportunity to understand better what the school district's position, the school board's position, individual schools' positions are on things like um, in-person uh, instruction. And, and we had a good conversation about it, of course. Uh, a lot of the thinking is uh, with regard to vaccinations and that type of thing, but then there's also many good arguments made for just doing some of the uh, protective stuff that we've been doing, and it's been working. Uh, but again, these, these, are, these are challenging things. Wouldn't have been in the um, ethics bowl if it wasn't a challenging ethical kind of a, a situation. So, uh, in any case, it was a. I thought it was a very good meeting. And the one last thing I want to talk about, and and uh, Senator Powell kind of uh, kicked this off, is um, the fact that the uh, Florida legislative session begins on the first of March, and that we're already uh, dealing with a lot of bills that are coming um, at us to what they refer to as preempt our home rule authority. And our home rule authority is just the ability to make decisions about whether or not to regulate something in the area and what that regulation should be uh, as opposed to having um, a top-down uh, Tallahassee-driven approach to dealing with some of these topics. So one of the things I did was I spoke to uh, our village attorney earlier today and I asked him if he would talk to a couple of these and he can probably build on some of what uh, Senator Powell said. Just for the, the, the council's information, as far as I know, and you all may have information on this, we normally go up to Tallahassee uh, once a year and, and actually walk the halls and talk to people. Um, everything's virtual now. And so I think that also includes Palm Beach County Day, 
although the details are still being worked on that. Uh, and I know it includes Florida League of Cities Action Days. So uh, we're going to be engaging still with uh, the members up there, but we'll be doing it virtually. And, and actually, it uh, might even be better. I've, I've talked to a number of members who said, you know, they, they get a lot more done. Their conversation is a lot better focused. Um, <laughs> and, and I don't know whether that means stay out of our hair or, or whether it, it, it is, in fact, um, uh, true. So we're going to be engaging, but we're going to be doing it virtually this year. So that completes my report. Good evening, everyone. It is nice to see you up here. I hope you come back. Um, so the council had the opportunity to attend the ribbon cutting ceremony for our new capstone assisted living facility with memory care. And it was a lovely event. And we had the opportunity to, to tour, guided tour of the facility, especially the memory care, which I'm very interested in. And um, it, it's lovely. It's safe. It has everything people need. It's got a salon in there. It has a spa in there. There's a weight room. I think I'm going to move in early. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to thank, um, thank the team and congratulate them again. I'm glad that they're here for our residents. Good. Good. No report, Mayor. Steve, you there? Can you hear me? Hi, Mayor and Council. Can you all hear me? Great. Uh, a couple things tonight. Um, first of all, um, joining us this evening on Zoom is um, Mr. Trey Nazaro. He's one of the uh, Village of Gulfstream attorneys, and he's joined my office in an of council capacity. He's helping us out on um, some big projects that we're working on, and I'm, I'm having him come to council meetings so he can... Uh, meet uh, the uh, mayors and elected officials that we work with. Um, he handled um, in a big way a lot of the uh, public records litigation that Gulfstream had to uh, deal with several years ago. So he's a really good lawyer, good litigator, uh, good local government attorney. He's on the uh, conference tonight listening in. I wanted to introduce him to all of you. Um, and as I said, he'll be helping me out from time to time. Uh, so that was number one. Number two, at the last council meeting, Mayor, I was asked to uh, reach out to the county attorney's office uh, on the topic of um, quorum and sunshine, and uh, especially as it relates to our advisory as uh, volunteer citizen committees, um, planning, zoning, uh, and other committees. And uh, I talked to both Denise Malone and Denise Neiman, and um, the county attorney's office is, is completely aligned with uh, the, um, what I tried to explain at our last council meeting. It, it really depends on what the committee is doing, but if they are exercising the power and any of the delegated power that comes from the governing body, taking action um, under the current state of the law, quorum needs to be physically present uh, in the room. Um, and sunshine has to be uh, to be uh, followed as well. So that was their opinion uh, as well. And, and I, so I did want you to know that I followed up um, and spoke to both Denise Neiman herself and, and uh, Denise Malone on that topic. Um, finally, um, to uh, follow up Mr. Hamar's comments, um, you know, there is there are a num number of really disturbing uh, bills that are that have been introduced, um, they're not all moving through as, as rapidly as they could, so that's good news. But um, just to touch on a couple real quick, you know, House Bill Number 1, um, which has a Senate Bill 484, it's titled Combating Public Disorder. And this is the bill that increases penalties for certain criminal acts committed during an unlawful assembly. Um, this bill... Um, though it is of particular concern to local governments because this is the bill that would give a resident um, an appeal mechanism to the state administration commission if a local government makes any reduction to the budget of its law enforcement agency. And um, the bill also creates a civil cause of action against municipalities that 
quote, obstruct or interfere with reasonable law enforcement protection during a riot or unlawful gathering or assembly. Um, House Bill 1 has gone through its first committee and passed. Um, Senate bill has uh, been referred, but has had no uh, further scheduling at this time. Um, so so th this one um, is, is one we're watching. Senate Bill 62 would propose to um, completely eliminate state law that creates and, and implements regional planning councils. And I know you've all heard <laughs> about that one. Uh, we're keeping an eye on it. Good news on that, there is no House companion bill at this time. There's only a Senate bill. Um, Senate Bill 522 and House Bill 219 is the vacation rental bill, which um, would, would go even further to preempting vacation rental regulations to the state. Um, and it also adds some additional regulations regarding the advertising platforms like uh, Air, Airbnb and VRBO and those kind of things. A um, couple more just to keep you uh, aware, there's, there's a House Bill 55, Senate Bill 284, which would prohibit a local government from applying what it's calling building design related zoning and land development regulations. So you wouldn't be allowed to regulate um, external material, uh, roof material, architectural design, or any other aesthetic building features. That would all, I, I, yeah. Um, so that one has been introduced. And then there's another bill. This seems to come up a lot. House Bill 6009 would eliminate uh, the ability to use red light cameras. I don't think there's a companion Senate bill on that one. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's um, there's a whole laundry list, and that's just a, a sample of the things that are that we're keeping an eye on. Um, and obviously, as session starts and these things start moving forward or not, we'll keep you posted. Um, but I did want to give you, a, at Mr. Hamar's request, a little flavor for um, what we may be up against this session. Um, so I will conclude my report with that unless the council has any questions. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll make a statement, though. It's, it's, it's just amazing. Um, <clears throat> I, sh I was talking to a resident a few weeks ago. They were, they were asking <clears throat> questions about, you know, why there's been this movement over several years to strip local cities and municipalities from their ability to uh, home rule, you know, control what's going on in their community. And I pointed out to him, I asked him, I said, did they know how Florida got invented to begin with and the government structure that was in place? When they created Florida, they created 67 counties. They didn't create cities. Cities came along much later after that. And I just get the feeling that I think they're trying to roll this back to, with the, the, they're just these counties and there are no cities. and. Uh, it's unfortunate, but we got to continue to, uh, to fight that. But at, at the end of the day, I think it's going to take you, the citizens, uh, notifying your, your your local representatives at the state level that leave out our ability to run our, our communities alone so that we can, we can work on our quality of life based on the things that we want to see happen in our own cities. <coughs> That's my two cents on that. All right, I guess that concludes our reports this evening. Um, with that, <clears throat> Diane, do we have any petitions to, that are being presented? Does anyone here want to present a petition to the council? No petition present tonight. All right, seeing no petitions being here to be presented, I'm closing the floor to petitions. So if somebody shows up now, it's too late. For the petition. <laughs> okay, fine. no petitions. Um, at this time, um, we'll take statements from the public on non-agenda items, items that are not on the agenda or items that are on the consent agenda. Uh, so do we have anyone out there raising their hand who wants to make a non-agenda item or a consent agenda item public comment? No, I do not, Mayor. Okay, do we have any prior requests no submitted? Is there anyone, I don't have any comment cards for non-agenda item or consent agenda, but if anyone here has decided they'd like to do that, now would be the time. Seeing none. All right, I'm closing public comment then on non-agenda items and on consent agenda items. And with that, Diane, can you give us a consent agenda? Yes, Mayor Leon, thank you. Number one, approval of the minutes of the council regular meeting of January 21st, 2021. Two, approval of the village manager to execute the first addendum to provision of services agreement between the village of Royal Palm Beach and Pro Champs to extend the term of the agreement for the first one-year renewal period from March 10th, 2021 
Wednesday, March 10, 2022. Three, approval and authorization in accordance with the established <coughs> policy to make a budget amendment for Fund 302 in the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. Said amendment to transfer a total of $20,000 from storm drain outfall replacement PW20SD to Southern Royal Palm Gateway Project EN2002. Four, approval of the bid award in the amount of $176,377 and authorization for the village manager to execute a contract with the lowest responsive responsible bidder for the Southern <coughs> Boulevard and Royal Palm Beach Boulevard Gateway EN2002 project to ANSCO Incorporated. And five, approval and authorization for the village manager to execute an addendum to extend structural engineering services provided by Alan Berwick and Associates Incorporated for two years. Okay. Are there any comments from members on the council regarding consent agenda? If not, I look for a motion. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? If there's no opposed, Diane, please let the record show the consent agenda was approved 5 0. Now, the moment you all have been waiting for. <laughs> we get to agenda, regular agenda item R1. <clears throat> and this is a public hearing to consider application number 20 126, an application by Protec Automotive LLC, and adoption of resolution number 21 01, confirming a council action. The applicant is seeking special exemptions use approval for an automotive and or watercraft repair and or service service station on an approximately 0.47 acre parcel of land located at 300 business parkway street a dash two and with that graphic are you there yes sir i am you're on and mayor i'm Claire bradford in and, and if the applicant has a uh um, a representative that's going to be testifying they'll need to be sworn in as well um, oh yes that's right Keith this is Keith this is quasi judicial yes sir all right so swear in those who need to be sworn in right Bradford I have you is there anybody else that's going to be testifying on this uh, uh, item tonight we have two individuals uh, have here three three did you raise your hand we have three indivi four individuals here that are raising their hand five to testify all right if you'll six all, uh... the number keeps going up <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have several individuals here uh in the village hall who who are raising their hand to testify thank you sir do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of per we lost them we lost keith And I didn't hear. We're losing you. You're, you're, everybody your voice is yes. coming in and out. Yes. Hello? We didn't hear you, Keith. You broke up. Let me try that again. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. They all shook their head and said they do. And then uh, back to the mayor and council. Any ex parte uh, discussions on this item would need to be uh, disclosed on the record at this time. I spoke with Bradford. It's Selena. Uh, none. I've had none. I, I spoke with the village okay. manager. Thank you, Mayor. With those and Bradford. And the swearing, and we can proceed with the item. Thank you, sir. Can everybody see my screen? Bradford, you can now do your presentation. Great. Thank you, sir. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, the applicant is seeking special exception use approval to allow for a 2,721 square foot automobile repair service within a <coughs> office warehouse facility located at 300 Business Parkway, Suite A2, and situated within the Industrial General Zoning District. Um, the automobile and or watercraft repair and service station is listed as a special exception use within the Industrial General Zoning District. The automobile repair service will occupy, again, Suite A2 inside an existing 5,542-square-foot 5 building on Track D of the Westland Center Flat. In reviewing the proposed special exception, village staff consider compatibility with adjacent land uses, consistency with the village's comprehensive plan, 
in conformance with the village's development standards for the industrial general zoning district more specifically whether the proposed special exception is consistent with standards of the village comprehensive plan complies with all development regulations of the village code not have any adverse environmental impacts does not have adverse vehicle or pedestrian traffic impacts does not have an adverse impact upon public facilities does not have an adverse impact on adjacent properties is compatible with the character and living conditions of the existing neighborhood does not have an adverse impact on property values in, in the adjacent areas it is not a deterrent to the improvement or development of adjacent property the planning and zoning commission recommended denial of this application after january 26 meeting there was discussion from the public regarding cars from Pro Protex speeding up and down Business Parkway. I feel as though that was the factor that caused PNZ to recommend denial by a vote of five to zero. Staff has determined that the proposed special exception conforms to village standards and therefore is requesting their um, approval. Um, and with that being said, Mayor, I'll turn the floor back over to you. And okay, I'll Bradford, you said there was a representative for the applicant who wanted to speak? I spoke with the applicant. Yeah. It was either early this week or late last week, and they said that they would be attending the meeting, and I gave them very specific instructions on how to get to council chambers. Um, so I, I I think it's Mr. Patel. Mr. Patel there? You're, oh, you're the applicant. Oh, okay. Please come. Go back to the... Okay. And Ray, I'll be giving the screen back to you. <clears throat> Sorry, hi. Um, yes, my name is Amar Patel. I am, uh, my, myself and Corey Summers are the business owners of Protec Automotive. Um, you know, we were here, at, we, we were remotely here at the hearing last month. Um, and I don't know if you want me to jump right into it, but there was a lot of things said by a few of our neighbors uh, that we wanted to address. We had a chance to think about it, and, you know, there was uh, speeding up and down the road was brought up. Uh, I think there was a lot of fear of nitrous oxide that was brought up during the meeting. Uh, depicting us as a performance-only race shop was brought up at the meeting. The, the Although, meeting, this sort of record, the meeting you're referring to was the uh, the P and Z meeting. Correct. Correct. Okay. Correct. And uh, in, in, oh, sorry. in addressing in addressing that, uh, want, wanted to let the council know that there's no filling using or anything of nitrous oxide. I think that was being used as a fear tactic in my opinion, because it's not true. Uh, speeding up and down the roads is absolutely not true. Uh, and we've actually went over, Corey and myself, and went over and spoken to two of the three neighbors that had uh, uh, you know, brought up any concerns and addressed those concerns and actually have had positive feedback from uh, our neighbors, uh, some of our neighbors. Um, uh, we've also had you know, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like for the neighbors to speak first, and then I'd like to address any of the concerns well, that were brought okay. up. Is um, that, is that? Your neighbors have, yeah, they, they, there are comment cards on this item. Oh. They will be speaking, but this is your opportunity just to present any information that you think is pertinent, yeah, so to, I, I, relevant I, to what you actually say you're going to be doing there. And, okay, perfect. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, so what we are is actually we're actually a mechanic shop. Uh, we do maintenance on almost any vehicle on the road. Uh, we uh, we do tire, we, you know, we, we help with tires, we help with brake setups, we help with oil changes, we help with timing belts, water pumps, basically anything that will get your car back on the road uh, uh, is basically what we try to do at the shop. And as a small business, we do our best uh, to try to cover a lot of the spectrum of what's offered in the automotive space in order to uh, honestly become a profitable company, hopefully. Uh, we're a young company. Uh, we have uh, only two people that work at the shop. Um, and, you know, we're, we're open Monday through Friday. We're, as much as it's looking like that we're this performance uh, shop, we're actually your typical, you could bring your SUV, your, your van, your sedan, and your sports car to our shop to get fixed. That's simply what we do. How long have you been operating? I'm sorry? How long have you been open? Or, you're open and operating already, right? 
Yeah, we've been open since August 3rd. Of 20... 2020. 2020, okay. Right. Boy, open up a b- new business in the COVID environment. It, a lot well, of courage. Uh, it, uh, well, so that was in that location. Prior to that, we opened in uh, January of 2018. January of 2018, then we moved to that location on August. All right, so where was the other location? Was that the village? In, in West Palm Beach. It was in West, it was West, Palm, in West Beach. Palm Beach. Correct. Okay. What made you decide to come to Royal Palm Beach? Well, actually, we got tired of working in the heat over the summers, and we were able to. One of our customers actually bought a building in Royal Palm, and she said, it's air-conditioned. You guys want to make a move? So we decided to make a move. Okay. It's nice to work in an air-conditioned facility in the summertime. All right. Anything else you'd like to share? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. If I need to address something else, I, I have to. Okay. Hopefully, you guys will give me the floor again. All right. We'll Thank move you. to the next next portion now. What we do at this point, before we, we begin having comments from members of the council, we hear from the public. <laughs> All right. So for this agenda item, R1, we do have comment cards from the public I, that are physically here. Before I, I address the, the, these comment cards, do we have anyone raising their hand who's on virtually who'd like to comment from the public? No, Mayor. We have a why'd you raise your hand? Did you give us one of these? All right, I'll call you up. All right, no problem. No hands raised. Right? No, 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 Mayor. Okay. All right, then with that, we're. That was virtual. And we have no um, uh, uh, prior, no prior com- comments. All right, so all we have is this right now. Okay, we'll start out with, with uh, I think it's pronounced Jeff Patel. Come on up, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Just give us your name and address so for the record. Yes, um, my name is Dipti Patel. Um, I am the owner of the building at 300 Business Parkway. Um, I'm here to um, support Protac Automotive. Your support, okay. Yeah. Um, as he mentioned, um, I was one of uh, his customers at the old location. Um, Corey has been maintaining my family's uh, personal vehicles and um, my business uh, delivery vehicles for over seven years. And when he opened his own shop, um, obviously I moved over to his um, um, his shop. And um, when um, I mean, he's been very very good mechanic, um, very honest, um, with no no um, no issues. He's been very respectful to me, my family, um, my staff, um, and. When uh, when he and I agreed to move Protac um, into my building, um, I kind of did it without hesitation because I knew him for over seven years. <laughs> um, he and his staff have always been very professional, organized, and welcoming. Okay. So it was for me. I didn't have to think. <laughs> um, and we're we're also. Um, Next to the uh, project where it is, we're also building a uh, compounding pharmacy. And I just like to um, mention that noise or parking or traffic hasn't been concerned for me or my staff who's working to build the pharmacy right now. And um, um, they haven't been in our way of uh, operation. Um, it's been going very, everything is moving along smoothly, and I, I, and I felt. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Um, the space that they now occupy, uh-huh. what, what was there before them? Uh, it was empty. It was just empty? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was empty. There, yeah. the, the, there's a two suites, so they're on suite um, uh, 1B, and uh, we're building this uh, new operation on 1A. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Just walking, you had said that you'd service your personal vehicles and your delivery vehicles. What personal vehicles do you have? What type of vehicles? Um, I have Tesla. Okay. Thanks. Well, I, yeah, what kind of? Tesla. 
A, t- a Tesla. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there a link here? I, I, <laughs> okay. So would you repeat that. again what was in that area before Nothing. Protect? It was empty. Empty. It was empty. Oh, it was, oh, it was yeah. empty. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else would like to ask this? Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, next we're going to hear from Margaret Rice. I made a guess it was you, so come on down. Go go back there. Yes, thank you. My name is Margaret Rice. My husband and Lloyd, my husband Lloyd and I own Aquasoft Water Systems. That is 220 and 240 Business Parkway. We've been there about in Tesla. 25 years at the park and uh, 49 years in business. Uh, the owners of Protec came in my office and uh, wanted to, you know, talk to me. And we talked, and, and because the last time I did speak, I had said that um, it was very noisy. You know, there was cars coming up and down our road. And we have a funeral home. Just, what, I just so for the record, we want to identify, what road are you speaking about? Business Parkway. Business Parkway, yes. okay. Uh-huh. There's a number of automobile dealers or repair shops on our parkway, but mainly it was very loud and the cars were coming down. Now, he's, he has assured me that that wasn't him or I wouldn't be hearing that anymore because what happened, and while I, how I explained it the last time is that a lot of times the trucks come in at our operation or the air conditioning company, and they can't drive in. They unload out on the road. And with the funeral home right on the corner, there's a lot of traffic. And that's why I was very concerned about the, the speed that some of the cars were coming. And you're saying one of your concerns was that the trucks speed. were not parking off the road? They were, like, blocking the road? No, they were on the side of the road. On the side unloading. of the road? Unloading. Unloading. Bradley Air so these, these trucks you're referring to, are these trucks related to their business, or were they? No, trucks making delivery. But not, it had nothing to do with their business? No, it did not. Okay. But if you had cars racing up and down the road and that you can't see past these trucks that were unloading, okay. it is dangerous, it, yeah. it's and especially safety. Palm yeah. West is very busy all the time, all right. funeral home, and so there's a lot have, of people milling have, around. Have you reported any of these concerns to the uh, uh, Palm, uh, PBSO? No, I have not. Okay. No. I talked to these gentlemen, they were very nice, they assured okay. me that, you know, they want to be, um, you know, welcomed in the um, okay. car. And, you know, I was just concerned about the speed of the traffic in the cars. All right. Any of you have any questions? Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Kevin Gillum? How you doing? Kevin Gillum. I represent the Royal Palm Beach Business Park. I'm the president. And I was here at the last meeting. At the what meeting Planning was that? Planning zoning. Sir? Planning zoning, okay. Okay, and prior, okay, the speeding is ridiculous. It's racing up and down the road. The safety is, it's just terrifying because of what goes on. Now, the noise was really, really loud also. We're across the street, but I understand we're in a business park. Noise is noise. What my real concern is the speed. After the meeting, almost instantly, the speeding has come to, I'm not saying it's gone. I'm not saying speeding. I'm talking about race, not speeding. Speeding's everybody. It has got much better. The noise, um, the speeding has also. But I'm also told that the sheriff's department went to several different businesses and warned them that they're going to start looking into this. And it did get better. My concern is I hope they're sincere. And I did have a conversation with Corey. I hope it's sincere because I truly believe it's just a matter of time before someone's dead. 
you hope it's, it's sincere that the sheriff sincere. is going to look into it? Well, I was told that the sheriffs, because we have to get some kind of agreement with the sheriff's department, they won't patrol in there or police in there. And we're working on that, I believe, as a as a. It's a private roadway. They they can't right. They can't patrol on the private oh, roadways okay. without and an agreement. Correct. Okay. okay. Right. And supposedly, I mean, we're working on that. I guess that requires a study and four hundred dollars to the to the the village and on and on and on. And we are working on that. Prior to that, I mean, I've been in the park since nineteen eighty eight. Okay. We never really. I mean, there's always issues. Has it got bad? Yes. Okay. The sheriff, when they went around, if it was them, it, I can't tell you. I can tell you truthfully that it has improved. My concern is hopefully it just didn't improve to get this exception through. Sure. You know what I mean? And then what? Okay. Okay. Very good. Any of you want to have any questions? I'm, I'm curious about the association. Yeah. Can you tell me, um, does the association meet regularly? conversations well obviously last year we haven't done any meetings but even virtually have you um, no I mean on the phone yes you want to call that virtually but do we sit behind a screen and virtually no we don't phone conversations yes um, if there's an opportunity for you all to get more involved in the association that would possibly help <coughs> you. okay and you know what I mean is there is there any other question? Yeah, I have a question for you. So um, you said that you were going to pursue this agreement with PBSO so that that area can be uh, policed. Is that, Absolutely. Is that right? We're also looking into speed bumps. It's a it's, it's serious situation. Okay. But that has to be, go through here, too. Okay. Are you, aware of you don't just put speed bumps down, I'm told. Right. <laughs> I am not aware, but I'm. But he, it's, everything he's saying is accurate. Yes, they have to. Have, we have to have an agreement. We the the money that we collect is for the traffic study that we pay our consultant, and what we're doing is making sure that everything's in accordance with, with uh, UMTCDs, the Uniform Manual of Traffic Control Devices, um, and we have to have this agreement for anything the police does to make it enforceable. Otherwise, it's not enforceable. It's, that's because it's a private street. That is okay. correct. All right. Can you just contact uh, talk with with Captain Aox just to make sure that. It, we hand it out of the engineering office, and yeah. and sounds like you've talked to somebody about the agreement. And you've talked to somebody about the speed hump. We do have a speed hump policy. I was just I'm sure say that I, I have not talked to us as another board member that brought that to me. Okay, so but I was unaware that you had to have an agreement for someone to for the sheriffs to. Okay, I texted Chris about 15 minutes ago to, to ask him, <laughs> but he didn't answer. So I'm assuming. What? I'm assuming about, he doesn't know it right off the top of his head. Okay, about our policy, about our speed hump policy? About whether they had an agreement or not. Okay, but regarding the policy, are they eligible to, to, to follow that protocol? If they wanted, if they that policy to doesn't apply to private roads, does it, Ray? I think it does apply to private roads, but I don't remember I don't remember it how it applies to private roads. If it, it, it definitely addresses private roads, but it might be as something as simple as you can't do it, but I'm not sh I don't know that. We're going to take a look at that. We have in the village. We do have a formal policy for communities, local communities, to uh, mitigate uh, speeding problems within, you know, up and down their local streets. And there's a process that we go through, and and we do an analysis. And and at the end of the day, the local community makes a decision, you know, based on what we may recommend as a remedy to this. S speed humps is an option, but there are other options too, to to go forward with that. So. We're looking to see if that's something that, that would apply because this is a private street. And how that works. Could I just mention, can mention can something? Yeah. So I, I live in an HOA uh, uh -huh. neighborhood. Yes, sir. And we have the same issue because it's a privately owned road. And so if we want PPSO to actually enforce the speed limit and things mm -hmm. like that, we have to go through that study. We've chosen not to, to do that. Um, but there were times when um, you know we, we really thought hard and long about whether or not to do that. Um, so this sounds like something that might really work to everybody's benefit. Uh, and insofar as the speed, uh, what do we call it? Traffic calming stuff, right? Speed humps, speed bumps, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, when we pursued it from an HOA point of view, what I was told was basically the same thing applies. The challenge is uh, there has to be enough traffic to justify it. A, a bunch yeah, of other things that, that fold into this whole thing. No problem. There are two, there are two 
possibilities there. That we definitely need to pursue it. Otherwise, it would be negligence on all of our parts. I understand what you're saying. This is very serious. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Rick Wilson. My name is Rick Wilson, and uh, I work next door in the, the building directly behind Protec Automotive. I've worked there for a lot more years than Protec has been there. But, and I actually work on the behind the door that is right adjacent to their building. I've not heard very much excessive noise ever come out of there. I've, I've never witnessed these guys speeding around our parking lot or up and down Business Parkway. And these gentlemen talked to me last week or two weeks ago. So I've kind of been listening to the traffic that goes up and down Business Parkway. And they were closed on Monday. No one was there. And there was plenty of cars speeding up and down Business Parkway. There is a, there is a traffic problem there. There's a lot of traffic on that road. They store school buses down there at the end. And <clears throat> there is a lot of people speeding up and down there. But it's not these guys that are doing it. Mm. There's a lot of other people that are doing it. And, yes, it does need to be enforced. And speed bumps do work. But I've not noticed an excessive amount of noise there. And these gentlemen have worked on my car once. And it's a little Honda CRV. It's not a race car. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see their business stay there. Sure. Okay. Thank you. My name is Cindy Hatfield, and Rick actually works for me. I've been in business for 43 years, and I have enjoyed all of the people around me. I've had no problem with speeding, and if anything, there is a problem. There's restaurants in that area, and there's constantly big tractor trailers that are blocking the road, and we have to be very careful to get around them. It is a business park. I've never complained about anybody. The noise does not bother me. And if anything happens to this company where they're not able to produce what they're doing, I think it would be a travesty. We should be in the business of promoting small business, not the opposite. Thank you much for your comments. Okay. I uh, have a, one last card, uh, Gary Hendrick, or Hedrick. Got it. My name is Gary Hedrick. I actually sold the buildings to uh, Michael Patel, who I believe is the cousin of Amar Patel. They were going to put in a uh, pharmacy compound, didn't know anything about a race shop, but my business is next to theirs. And I first of all want to say Amar Patel is a gentleman, as is his brother. The problem is Corey Summers is a young guy, and he's a motorhead. I mean, uh, they oh, race. Right. What well, would you call him? A motorhead. motorhead. In other words, he's great with motors and speed and so oh, forth. Okay. That's a common term. It's a technical it's not term. derogatory. Okay. But uh, at, at, at any rate... Uh, the noise is terrible. Now, it has improved 90% since the meeting when Amar said... Hold on a second. Which meeting are you referring to? The uh, P&Z meeting on January right. 26th. And what you say something's improved 90%. What's improved? The noise the, from racing cars? The noise cars? and uh, the traffic. Okay. Uh, ba basically, in my personal opinion... Uh, Corey Summers was deliberately parking vehicles and racing the engine and so forth because I went over there, as I'm required to by our POA, to maintain the fire systems and so forth. He threatened me, I can't maintain their fire systems. They do not have a fire inspection for their sprinklers now. They're operating without regard. Uh, Corey doesn't follow any rules. He opened up here months and months and months. I believe it was actually May, without getting licenses, anything. I still don't think they have uh, a permit for their uh, window signs. They took my shrubbery, which I, as the POA, I'm required to maintain, and they hacked away almost the entire hedge because he didn't like it. Well, I can't maintain the building. The lighting is not on his half of the building. 
because he won't let me go back there and service it. And the POA says I'm entitled to do that. I have to do it. We're in violation now of the fire department because of Corey Summers. And have, have there's you, no way to... to have, you, have you notified the, the fire department about the violation? No, I haven't. I thought I would speak to Mike Patel, who I believe is in India now. Okay. And he's a gentleman. Like I said, we could uh, resolve it. This understanding. But is, I'm very concerned because I can't do what I have right, to do as a I, POA. I just want you to be clear. The violation with the fire department is between them and the fire department. That's not something the village would be involved in. But if there was something that's wrong, well, they're still racing. To, they're well, no, racing I'm through just, the I'm park. just talking about the violation issue you raised about the fire violation. Right. Okay. All right. Well, they they still race uh, vehicles through the park with no license plates. Amar is, I understand, a fabulous driver. That's what I've been told. And uh, they do race the cars within the four buildings. Okay. And I, I would personally like to see their business approved for one year conditional upon him continuing good behavior. Uh, I would like to, to further say that uh, there's reasons why my former tenant, Cindy Hadfield, went for this, and it's, it's devious. I could explain it to the tax people, but I won't go any further on that one. But Okay. Yeah. But at, at any rate, uh, all I want to do is maintain my business without being terrorized by these vehicles. And like I said, if you give them the approval, just give them a time limit that they've got to be good boys. <laughs> okay. And I don't think I'll ever have a problem with Amar Patel. Corey doesn't like old farts. I'm an old fart. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for the comments, sir. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, Keith, can you hear me? The, the notion yes, of, of a conditional approval, as he suggested, is that something that's, that we can or cannot, should not, or cannot do? We may impose reasonably related conditions of approval uh, that are proportional to the uh, request being made. So um, if, if the condition is related to uh, the use, um, yes, you can impose a condition of approval. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Patel? Since you're leasing out the space to them, how long is their lease for? Come, come to the microphone. Yes, thank you, ma'am. I think I, I think it's for five years, but I would have to double check myself. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I kind of I lost track of some of the names. Uh, so, Corey Summers is who? That, that's you. He's the motorhead. Is that what he calls it? Right. Okay. Yeah, I. Yeah, so you can tell me the difference between a gearhead and a motorhead at some point. I'm used to hearing gearhead. But that, so that's you. And so this gentleman was talking about that experience. Okay. Did it? Any other? Okay, I have no more comment cards from anyone who's here, but I will leave the door open. Does anyone else who has not submitted a comment card like to comment? Sir, please go ahead. I do. My name's Joe Joyo. I own a tin shop right around the corner from these guys. I've known Corey for a while. They drive past the shop, no speeding. Sometimes the cars are noisy. That's not his doings. They come in like that. Yeah, traffic, there's a lot of traffic in there. A lot of school buses, a lot of activity. It's a business park. It's the way it's supposed to be. I got a lot of business too. I've been there since 1993. I got a little business, you know, people in and out all day long. We fight with the school buses, we fight with the tractor trailers, but you gotta run your business. I see no problem with these guys running the business. Automotive, motorcycle, doesn't matter. You know, a lot of people are getting pushed out of the business park because there's too many rules, regulations. It's harder to do a business. You know, we get cars to stay overnight. We're getting in trouble for that. People can't pick up their cars. I can't put them inside the building. A lot of things we have to go through. Who's, these rules and regulations emanate from where? Rural Palm. But from us? I don't know from you, but I think it's um, um, okay. planet, or no, um, code enforcement. 
Okay. That's us. That would be us. Okay. Yes. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's hard for us. You know, they're a new business. I, they're opening up. I hear you. It's, it's... I see nothing wrong with them at all. Okay. It, we okay. interchange with business. I send them business. They send me business. Okay. So, all right. Well, Thank we, you. We, we do want the businesses, the small businesses in our community to be successful. And we do want them to be here to provide goods and services to our citizens. So, yes, we, we all would like to see our small business community uh, be prosperous and, and, and effective. Okay, going once, going twice. Anyone else who did not submit a comment card who would like to comment? Any? You say something? Come on up, sir. My name's Andrew Rubin. I'm actually an employee. Um, I'm a former police officer actually at uh, Riviera Beach. Um, oh. So when it comes to like laws and regulations, I'm pretty heavy on that kind of stuff from enforcing and following the rules and everything. Uh, before I even worked there, I had my car worked on uh, by Corey at the old location. And uh, when you're in the automotive you know, scene, you want to make sure that you trust your mechanic. Uh, you want to make sure you're not getting cheated when you get your car worked on. It doesn't matter what kind yeah. of car it is. Yeah. Um, you got to trust them because when you get it back, it's got to be safe. It's got to be done right. Uh, I gave my car to Corey. I got it back, and it was done perfect. You know, I had no complaints of it. I had no complaints of him or anybody else. Uh, the service was good. The car still runs great. Uh, and that was like two and a half years ago. Um, being an employee uh, of Corey, um, you know, we get along really well. And uh, uh, speaking on the, the part where uh, the fire inspection that he had mentioned, um, you know, I never stepped foot over at his business. Um, and I don't know if Corey might have before that. I'm not too sure. Uh, I don't believe so. I've never seen him personally take a step foot over there. Uh, but he just waltzed in one day unannounced and, you know, started speaking his mind. But, um, which I think if you're a business owner, that's kind of not like how you should operate. You should make a phone call or walk in and, you know, to don't walk through the door into the shop, first of all, because it's not safe if you're not insured or an employee. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he walked all the way into the shop. Um, uh, you know, you, you got to be a little more cordial when you're when you're dealing with your neighbors as a business owner. Uh, if you want to do it properly, you know, you don't just waltz in on somebody and say, "Hey, blah blah blah, this and that." You know, uh, there's things professional way to go about it. Um, you know, it'd be nice for us to stay open. Uh, I have a child on the way, so for me to stay in business with them, uh, it's very important. Sure. Um, it's my first child with that. Um, you know. I see no, no, no wrongdoing with the business being there. It, yeah, we're young uh, as far as a company, but uh, we're respectful for the area. Um, we follow the speed limit. We follow all the rules. Um, you know, you have to take cars out to test them after you, you work on them because you can't just hand the keys over to somebody after changing the brakes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, without testing the vehicle, then you're at liability for somebody else getting in an accident and so on and so forth. So it's with us driving the vehicles, it, it, you know, we do drive vehicles sometimes, but we're not excessive we're not racing up and down the road um we do see school buses we see fpnl vehicles we see semi trucks they're all over the place it's a business park where it's going to be loud it's going to be noisy um i don't see any any pinpointing that, hey i saw this guy specifically this time this day in this vehicle um you know we're, all the vehicles are registered to, to private owners they're not illegally registered um they're not you know they all have license plates um you know as a whole, I don't see why we can't be there. I see, you know, we're respectful, we're young, we're willing to contribute to the community. Um, you know, we just want to make good neighbors with everybody. I mean, we want to be successful just as everybody else. We want to be in business, you know, 25, 30, 40 years, just like everybody else in the area. And uh, if we can provide a good service to the community, I see no problem with that. So that's, so that's my two cents on it. Okay, sir, your time is gone, but we appreciate your comments. Thank you. Okay. You have a question? Hold on. Oh, we have a question for you. You have a question? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to open it for gentlemen. You have a question, sir? Did you have a question? I, I had a specific question, but instead of Mr. Patel or the gentleman who just spoke, either one of you can do it. So just for clarification then, and I completely understand after you have repair done on your car that you want to test it out and drive it. So the concern is, is that they're testing out the vehicle. Are they driving it or are you driving it up and down the street to make sure that it it's, operates well? You guys do it, okay? Not the home, not the car owner. You guys do it, okay? You get okay. So, um, just like when you test drive a car, they don't drive around 
you know, just the parking lot of the car lot? Is there somewhere else you can take it to test drive it? Because I understand that you need to, right, okay. Okay, so you're not just going up and down no, Business Parkway, and, yeah. Yeah, this I, 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 I understand. That, I just want a clarification. Yeah. I wouldn't call that an adequate test drive going up and down Business Parkway. Yeah. The vehicles that we test drive, we don't take them on Business Parkway except just to leave Business Parkway. Yeah. <coughs> okay. It's too late now. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't operate vehicles in Business Parkway except to leave Business Parkway because it's the only exit and entrance into the, into the area. So, you know, taking a, a 5 to 10 minute, 20 minute drive to test a vehicle out down 441, it's basically just to make sure the car's operable longer than you would just to turn it on and park it outside. So. Right, and that's what, so the concern was is just driving down the Business Parkway side just so you can get out, and that's what some of the Correct, complaint was and that's before. every bit of maybe, what, like 800 feet, 900 feet, I think, to the right. entrance, so. I mean, you can, you're only going about 20 miles an hour. So. That's what I want to hear. Thanks. Okay. Uh, before you step away from the podium, uh, let me. Um, see, see what you got yourself into? <laughs> oh, I, I can do this so all That's, that's, that's what you get for the spontaneous <laughs> I'll speak that's kind right. of a thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, first of all, let me say I, I do understand the importance of having a mechanic you can trust uh, and one who is reasonable and uh, does, a, does a good job, both from the point of view of what it costs and that what they do actually works, and those are important. And one way you verify that is through some kind of a test drive, I understand that. Um, what strikes me, though, is there were comments made about how since the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, things have gotten dramatically better. So something happened there. Absolutely. Be completely candid, it's, my, it's our first time going through this process quite rookies, actually never really attending, attended a process like this. So I think our opposition knew we weren't going to be prepared. And do I think we've changed anything that we've done along the way? Not at all. We've actually, all we've done is go to our neighbors and say, this is who we are. So to identify ourselves. And then if you see us doing something, sure, you have the right to come to us and say, hey, here, here's an issue. I've identified you doing it. What happens is in that parkway is there's multiple automotive and yeah, other there's trucks. A lot of them. Yeah. So when you're the closest to your neighbor and they see you working on a Corvette, for example, and they say, okay, well, these guys are gearheads, motorheads. So every time they hear a noise, they think, well, must be them, right? We, we didn't do a good job going in and meeting our neighbors right off the bat when we moved in. I think that was a big, that was a big mistake. It was a big, and that's a learning curve, right? And then the other thing I think what happened is from a noise standpoint or from a, whether it be traffic standpoint, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's, it's just naturally thinking that, oh, well, I know these guys now, so maybe it's not them. Or if there is some noise, oh, it's not that, you know, not that loud anymore. I don't know. Or maybe, maybe naturally people just stop driving up and down the street aggressively. You know, it's hard to say that there's a lot of traffic and then, then to say, oh, there's a lot of racing. Say, well, if there's a lot of traffic, how are we racing? Right? So it's kind of so that that that's the challenge that we're met with, but we understand and we understand our neighbors' concerns. We'll, look, we, we will share them. If we want to put speed bumps, we'll we're we're there with you. We don't we don't want any of our customers leaving and feeling like, oh my god, that place is dangerous, don't want to go there anymore. Right? I mean, my a good friend of mine owns the building. I don't want the building to be devalued. I don't want people to think that our neighborhood is the rough part of town and not bring their cars to us, they're expensive cars to us, because that's, that's our bread and butter. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? No? no? All right. For the record, I'm officially now, I'm closing public comment on agenda item R1, okay? And um, I'll look for any further comments from members on council at this point. Thank you. I have a question, and I, I think it's for maybe a Bradford question. Are you there? Sir? Um, my question is typically when we have a situation like this where we deal with special exceptions, isn't the way the process goes, or correct me if I'm wrong, is you have a place that, you know, there's certain legal entitlements to special exceptions. 
you go in, you get the special exception, and then you start doing um, instead of opening and then finding out because it's been several months or stuff that this business has been operating, correct? First, you get the special exception to make sure it's compatible and it fits there. And then the business opens, not what we have in this situation, correct? That is correct. Okay. And that's one thing I would suggest that you would have done differently. That that could have been something you did differently because it, it was really odd to me sitting here for as many years because, and I think the problem you ran into was, you know, it seemed to me to be uh, an issue with, oh, I don't like the way they're running their business or the problems with their business. It's not, it, it, in my opinion, it's really taken away from what the issue is, which is, okay, we have certain legal entitlements to what we're allowed here. Is this a business that's compatible with surrounding? And it seems to me it is. It's in a business parkway. It's something that you know, is allowed and should be allowed. And unfortunately, the way this panned out was you kind of created some problems for yourself because you didn't start off with, okay, we come in, we get our special exception, and then we go from there. And then all of this stuff that, I, that I've been hearing, and I, I, my hat's off to you for, for addressing it, is, uh, you know, na neighbor stuff. And if it's, you know, the police patrolling more or putting in speed bumps or whatever the issues are, but those are things you probably wouldn't have had to deal with if it just from the start. But that that's what my thought was is because usually we don't get a bunch of people coming in saying you're doing X, Y, and Z wrong because you shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z to begin with. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. One, one other, other comment kind of following up on that. So it sounds like you've taken some steps in the direction of becoming that good neighbor. Um, and um, as... Uh, uh, my my uh, friend, uh, Councilwoman Rotowski said, uh, we uh, involvement in the POA is is a really good idea. Um, that's that's a healthy way to stay on top of things and and also to give people uh, a uh, a quick way to uh, voice any concerns and then a quick opportunity for you all to turn it around. Um, so it sounds like some good may have come out of all of this. All right, I guess I'll try to put a summary context around this. Um, the, uh, our staff is recommending uh, approval for this request. And these, uh, these extenuating circumstances, I, I'm not convinced at all that the, uh, this particular business is, is at the core of, of some of the issues that I've heard that are going on at Business Parkway. Um, I think the POA should continue, to, if, if that's the organization that's talking with the sheriff, uh, PBSO about patrolling or doing things to get a better traffic flow. Um, I think that um, the testimony this, this evening is that the, the proprietors of this business want to be good good uh, neighbors uh, and fit in. Um, and I don't know how many uh, auto-related repair type operations there are up and down Business Parkway. I, it's just interesting that this particular business got uh, blamed for things that probably gone, uh, been going on all along and um, needs to be addressed. But that's that, I, I'm not convinced at all that that's at the, at the cause of this business. And um, I will ask, uh, if there's no further comment from council, I'll ask uh, for a motion to accept the recommendation for approval uh, from staff. Motion to, ex um, to approve. Motion to approve regular agenda item R1. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show the agenda item R1 was approved by zero. Good luck Thanks. and good fortune and follow the rules. Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you all for coming this evening. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We're going to move in now to agenda I'm item there. R2. R2, uh, which is a public hearing for the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 1010, amending chapter 16, business tax and registration, other business uh, regulations of the code of ordinance of the village of Royal Palm Beach, to add an entirely new article four, mobile food vendors 
in order to impose requirements on such vendors in accordance with Chapter 509 Florida Statutes. Further providing that Section 16-65 through 16-70 uh, shall be reserved for future village purposes, providing that each and every other section of the subsection of Chapter 16, Business Tax and Registration, other business regulations, shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, a survivability clause, and an authority to codify, providing an efficient date and for other purposes. Thank you, Keith. <laughs> All right, who, who, Ray, you gonna talk about this? Yes. Okay. So effective July 1st, uh, the Florida uh, statute partially preempted regulations as it relates to food trucks. In accordance with that state law, there were some items outlined that the village may do. They can require food truck vendors to show their licenses from the state. They can require food truck vendors to obtain business tax receipt from the village. They can impose new regulations uh, on, the, on the vendors in accordance with Chapter 509, and that's what we chose to do. In summary, uh, this ordinance amends Chapter 16, our business tax re registration, to create a new article in order to impose new regulations on mobile food trucks and specifically where these vendors can operate within the village. It establishes definitions and classifications of mobile food trucks into three classes. It imposes new regulations on the mobile food trucks including when special event permits are required, imposing consent requirements from adjacent property owners, limiting food where food vendors can occur, and when alcohol sales can occur, providing distance separations requirements from existing food establishments, specifying conduct near village-sponsored events and in public right-of-ways, restricting the number of operating days, and limiting the use of designated parking spaces, hours of operation, noise, and signage. Uh, the ordinance goes on in detail in each one of those categories. If anybody has any specific questions, I'll be more than glad to answer them. I believe we approved this 5-0 at first reading. And it was approved 5-0. At the last council meeting, this is the second reading. All right, I have no comment cards on agenda item public from the public on agenda item R two. Um, do we have anyone with their hand raised out in virtual line? No, we don't, Mayor. All right, we have no no one uh, who wants to comment publicly from the public virtual. So I'm closing public comments on agenda item R two. And unless there are additional comments or questions from members on council, I look for a motion to approve. Motion approves uh, regular agenda item number two. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R2 was approved in a second reading. 5 0. Okay. Agenda item R3 is a public hearing for the second reading and adoption of ordinance number 1011, uh, amending chapter 15, landscaping and vegetation management of the Code of Ordinance of the Village of All Palm Beach at Article 4, Vegetation, Protection, and Preservation at Section 15-79, Tree Replacement. To exempt certain residential properties and to provide that no waivers shall be permitted with respect to requirements of this section, further amending Article 5, Design Standards at Section 15-130. Minimum landscaping requirements to modify the minimum number of shrubs required per single family lot. Further amended Article 6, Material and Installation Standards at Section 15-143. Plant Material Standards to modify the height and size standards of vegetation installed on single family lots, providing that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 15, Landscaping and Vegetation Management, shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, survivability clause, authority to codify, providing an effective date, and for other purposes. Okay. So, Senator, you're up. So, after we had enacted our landscape and preservation ordinance a, a few years ago, the state legislation had enacted some laws saying that if uh, somebody wanted to take a tree out on single family residential property that they felt was a threat to their property, they could do so without a permit. And, and and regulation by by the village. Uh, as a result of that law, uh, we need to we modified ours, and 
and we had some things in it that still required the single family if they were taking trees out or if it was recognized they were taking trees out at some later date that they had to meet the preservation uh, requirements of and and replacement schedule in accordance with the ordinance it was at virtually impossible to administer um, so we're changing the ordinance to go back to every res single family residential lot townhomes duplexes villas uh, meet the minimum standard instead of instead of something that might have been higher because of a, a tree that was not preserved and specifically a specimen tree that was removed and not preserved that's what this ordinance does this ordinance uh, ex exempts the single family uh, the villas the townhomes the duplexes uh, from the replacement schedule in the preservation ordinance but uh, clarifies that the minimum landscape requirements of section 15-130 remain applicable to these properties uh, in the process of doing these modifications uh, we also reduced the number of hedges to 2,000 square feet and we also changed the height of the tree from 14 feet to 10 feet though it could possibly be more of a of a do-it-yourself project 14 feet trees are considerably heavier than a 10-foot tree and we're trying to make our goal is to get the minimum standard on all our residential lots, which is a tree for every 2,000. And making that easier for our residents, we think, will be better, or get to closer towards that goal. And then uh, the last thing on the, on the hedges, reducing the, the size of them from two feet and 24 inches to a one and a half foot and 18 inches. And that, again, to make it an easier do-it-yourself project. Uh, the difference in, in, in size is made up very quickly in the growing season. So. We think uh, these are good changes. It's the second reading. We did change from the first reading to the second reading, adding the um, townhomes, duplexes, and villas. And that's it. And, and our first reading was approved 5 0. It was approved 5 0, yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I, have, I do not have any uh, pu uh, public comment cards on agenda item R3. Uh, do we have anyone out there in virtual? that has their hand raised that like to comment? No, Mayor. So we have no public comment virtually. So, uh, Diane, nothing was submitted in advance. All right, so with that, I will close public comment on agenda item R3. Unless there are comments from members on council, I'll look for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve regular agenda item number three. I second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have no polls. Diane, please let the record show agenda item R3 was approved 5-0 for the second reading. Agenda item R4 is a public hearing, and this is the first reading and approval of ordinance number 10112. Amending Chapter 2, Administration of the Code of Ordinance of the Village of All Palm Beach, Article 5, Code Enforcement at Section 2-111, Schedule of Violations and Penalties. To update Exhibit A in reference there to providing that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 2 administration shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, subservability clause, authority to codify providing effective date, and for other purposes. Over the past six months to a year, there's been several ordinance changes brought to the council with the goal and of changing our, our penalty from non uh, from criminal infraction to civil penalties and um, this updates our schedule a which which is our fees for um, that we charge the residents on on everything every service we provide and, and penalties and and uh, and this updates that schedule a exhibit a uh, for all the changes that we've made this past year and most recent ordinances that are on there tonight. That's all I have. To turn it back over to you, Mayor. Okay. Um, do you have any questions or comments from, from Council? I don't have any public comment cards on agenda item R4. Um, do we have anyone in virtual world who would like to comment or hand raise? No, Mayor. All right, so we have no, no virtual comment, public comments on agenda item R4. So, Diane, do we have any advance comments, no advance comments? So with that, I will close public comment on agenda item R4. If there are no questions or comments from members on council, I look for a motion to approve. 
Motion to approve regular agenda item R4. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R4 was approved uh, 5 0 for its first meeting. All right. Agenda item R5 was a public hearing for first reading and approval of ordinance number 1013, amending chapter 6, building. Buildings and building regulations of the Code of Ordinances of the Village of Royal Palm Beach at Article 2, Public Code, by repealing Section 6-22 and Section 6-23 in their entirety and readopting Section 6-22 and 6-23 in order to adopt a new, uh, adopt new amendment to Chapter 1 administration of the latest edition of the Florida Building Code in accordance with state law along with wind speed and line map uh, line map designations. And Jeff Graffick, you're going to update this? Update no, it's, a, the, it's, it's, it's Rob Hill, but I'll go ahead and take this one. I'm sorry. What, okay. what, we're, what we are doing here is is updating our code to be consistent with the building code that went into effect December 31st, 2020. What's the, the overall context? Does this code make things better or not better? Well, the trend of all our codes is to make buildings safer and stronger and withstand uh, disasters better so that and and this does that this does have um, changes the the wind speed uh, line map designations and makes them uh, but, you know, does this this impact only new construction and reconstruction up to a point okay when you're doing when you're doing reconstruction and depending on how much of the value of the home then the rules kick in any comments, member of council? No questions? Um, I do not have any comment card for agenda item R5. Um, do we have any uh, virtual comment hands raised? No, we do not. Okay, Diane, you receive everything in advance? Nothing? All right, so therefore, with that, I will close public comment agenda item R5. And if there are no questions or comments from members on council, I'll look for a motion to approve. One thing real quick, just for clarification. This is so we are we following state law. Correct. It's not that we're just coming up with this. It's. I, I, I think it's more the um, building regulations, and they're they're it's bigger. It's larger than the state. I don't know if it's it's uh the building code used to be southeast, but I think it's even expanded beyond that. I think it is south. I think it's southeast region. Well, I, I and I I think it I think that has changed and even expanded more than the it's southeast. Been, but I went built, the north. Rob Hill, our building <laughs> official, is <laughs> online. If you want me to get. If you want him to, want I just want a clarification: is it's something that they're doing if they're doing it nationwide or regional wide, and this is to update considering our weather patterns and for safety and things like that. All those. Uh, hello. Uh, good evening. Can everybody hear me out there? Yes, yes Rob. Rob. Great, great. No, this is just a, a, a uniform administrative code that kind of makes it. Uh, it outlines our procedures, permitting inspections. And also makes it more uniform with the the current wind design uh, maps that are are applied to all of the construction, uh, whether it's new or or it's remodeling. Uh, your question, uh, Mayor, about you know somebody that has a home that was built 20 years ago, is it required to come up to that new standard? No, you know that that's not what we're after here. And the answer is yes. This is a a more of a template based on the Building Officials Association of Florida. So throughout Florida, and it does mirror most of the southeast construction, and uh, it just gives it everybody a more predictable kind of fair expectation of uh, of how we implement the building codes here. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Yeah. Any Thank other you. Questions? No? All right, I'll look for a motion to approve then. I make a motion to approve regular agenda item number five. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Any opposed? We have no opposed. Diane, please let the record show that agenda item R5 was approved 5-0 on its first reading. And uh, there being no further business this evening, um, before this council, when is, can you announce when our next meeting is, Diane? March 18th? Okay. Our next meeting will be on. Mayor, March. excuse me, it'll start at 6 o'clock. We'll have our organization meeting. And oh, that's right. It's March. Oh. <laughs> well. Council meeting. 
from Olympus and we'll, we'll bring them in with us. We will we'll take that offline. <laughs> okay. So the meeting will start at 6, the organization meeting, then the regular meeting will be at 6.30. Start at 6 6.30. Okay. Good point. Thank you. Okay. That, that being it, then we are adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight. Appreciate it.